Hey, what's up, guys? We're back, and we're going to be going over the maximizer. So this is basically, it could be, you know, as simple or as difficult as you want it to be. Uh, maximizing is basically, because the plugins, the maximizing plugins are so smart, you could just bring the threshold down and be done with it. Uh, but we're going to be going through, like, the different options and uh, what to look out for and uh, some safety tips. So, um basically uh, a maximizer works the same way as a compressor but it has a very smart and intensely awesome uh, release control and attack control um, so yeah basically just like a compressor you have your threshold and your margin margin your margin uh, which is the absolute limit to what you want to output uh, typically you know I'd like to move this to like 0 0.1 or even uh, negative 1 dB uh, for safety. Uh, the reason for that is to prevent inner sample uh, clipping, which is uh, some clipping you can get. Um, basically, the plugin can't catch certain peaks uh, because it's between sample samples and bad things happen. Uh, but these plugins now, they can uh, detect it through uh, inner sample detection. So you want to have that on uh, for safety, uh, safety first. So uh, we have uh, our four modes here. Um, this is Intelligent Release Control, IRC. So this is basically, I believe this one uh, limits, it, it maximizes uh, with a psychologically, psychoacoustic, um, um, psycho psychoacoustic uh, factor in mind. And uh, it's based around that. So it's a perceived, it's more of a psych psychoacoustically perceived um, loudness that you're hearing. Uh, IRC2 is, uh, it's, it's newer, uh, but it, 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 it's more aggressive, right? And, uh, this is more transparent. So we have aggressive and transparent and psychoacoustic. So, uh, typically I would stick to the intelligent release control three, uh, for, uh, for m the most transparency. And, uh, that's what we're, going to be using there's also a hard and then a soft one soft uh, i guess would be for more like acoustic music uh classical uh and it's it's a it's a smoother release and attack um hard would be for aggressive material if you want to make the next you know justice album but yeah we're going to stick to uh irc3 and uh, inner sample detections can be on uh, so basically you just bring the threshold down but um I want to go over other things as well. So we have uh, our character mode. Uh, and keep in mind, this is very CPU intensive. Uh, we have crisp, clipping, pumping, balanced. I select balanced um, just because uh, with a good mix down, you don't need to like you know do pumping and stuff like that. Uh, when you do bring the threshold down, you, you could squash the dynamics a bit. And uh, with the trained ear, you can hear that. So you want to have transit recovery. So this takes, uh, the, it'll it'll detect when it squishes transients with the threshold down. And uh, with the transient recovery, it'll preserve those. So if you have something that's punchy and you make it loud and it doesn't sound punch anymore, select this button and go to town. Stereo link, what this does is it, it affects um, both both left and right at the same time um, with the same uh, game reduction and release and all that. If you turn that off, it, it affects um, each differently. So it can have a, a desirable effect. Um, nothing wrong with using that, but uh, sometimes you can get uh, weird um, phasing issues or, it, you know, if, if one side is being squished, you get some weird unbalanced, unfun things. Um, dithering, uh, dithering, if you are working with, you know, audio that's 24 bit or such, um, and you need to dither it down. Yeah, you can dither it down. Um, uh, you have our, your little bit meter here. You really don't need to worry about that. If you're using a 16, 16 bit, um, and all that fun stuff, uh, you can use a, a high quality ultra noise shaping if you want. Uh, I'd leave this on just just because, uh, and you can limit peaks and all that fun fun stuff. Um, what does that say? Suppresses uh, spurious peaks, high frequency shape noise. Ah, uh, yeah. So I guess I don't know. Leave this off. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that's basically all you need to worry about. Um, 
depending on the material, the character you want to go a fast or slow kind of release. It's it's a very complex algorithm, and you can tell it's complex because the CPU goes crazy sometimes. Uh, but we'll just uh, play it, and we'll bring the threshold down and uh, see what we get. So we're getting some game reduction here. And uh, generally, what we want is we want our RMS. We don't have, we're, not, we're not worried about our peaks, our RMS right here. We're, we want our RMS to get to 8. Because for dance music, 8 is, you know, the standard, unfortunately, of loudness. RMS means root, um, root means square. So it's the average, the perceived loudness, not the peaks. Um, so uh, 10 would be, you know, uh, dead mousey track. Um, eight would be trance because was this because there's a lot going on. Uh, six would be Yolo House, like Swedish House Mafia. Um, just different RMS levels, and it's good to examine it. And for the market you're making your music for, I would follow the trend in RMS unless it's completely ridiculous. But you know that's just me. So I'm gonna bring this uh, to eight, uh, negative minus eight uh, uh, RMS. So we have uh, around negative 8 RMS, uh, and we can play around with a fast or slow character. Typically if it's too punchy, you want to play around with this, but you know, sounds fine to me. So basically, uh, that is uh, a maximizer. You just want the levels to come up. And with a good mix, you can just bring the threshold down and be done with it. Um, one thing I would do, of course, is uh, bring the margin down uh, to, I guess, a decibel, a negative one. Just as a, a safety barrier of headroom. And it doesn't really matter, you know, DJ or whoever can just turn it up. Alright, so I'm going to... You know, turn this on and off, and you can see everything that we've done to this particular track. I'm going to be going through other ones and explaining more stuff, but generally this is what we're doing. So right now, you know, with it off, it sounds kind of thin. A little too punchy. Um, generally, I would fix this in the mix, but, you know, for mastering and all fun stuff, and for the sake of making this tutorial kind of interesting, and as a challenge to myself, this is what I did. So we uh, did some dynamics and EQing and all that fun stuff. You know, in general, I want to go into the post EQ. to give it a bit of uh, oomph. Because the, the post EQ is um, what we're doing. So that's my basic rudimentary mastering in uh, uh, less than half an hour. And it's uh, just making quick little repairs. Uh, I would be using more of these in a chain and just, you know, doing more cooking. But yeah, hopefully you learn stuff. Uh, yeah, like, uh, comment, subscribe. Uh, we're going to be doing some more stuff and uh, hope you dig it. All right, take care.